Hello everybody and welcome to this playthrough for Pro and Expert Division with Various Wind here for the Shredder Slopes Tournament and a full 9 of the Greenberg Slopes here in Golf Clash the game. Before we take a closer look make sure that you do hit the thumbs up button, also subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications. For those of you that do want to take the next step in, uh, in your game Go to patreon.com slash golfclash to to get the exclusive tour text guide for tour 7 to tour 13 or and getting the ultimate tournament guides for pro or expert or master. Link is directly in the description down below. Follow the info box on the right hand side to get the club distance adjustment, elevation adjustment, also what ball and club type I suggest you to play with. Have in mind that those are all suggestions and you don't have to follow it if you don't want to but there's always a plan behind it. So let's go to hole number one. For hole number one, this is going to be, if not the best, but one of the best chances of getting a drop here off the Greenberg slope. So we're going to start very close to the max line, a plus 12, and then we're going to apply some spins. You see here now we're using the top spin that's going to be a, a four and a half bar of top spin and two bars of side spin to the right. Ball guideline to go center down the fairway, very important. Here, even if you do have six bars of topspin, they could actually be worse of using more topspin than four and a half. This, as there is a risk of going too far, then you're gonna be in between clubs on the second shot. So try to keep it to four and a half bar topspin, that would be the best. I'm playing with a power three ball to prevent us from having to go with overpowering crosswind and, you know, to a degree in headwind. Max plus 10 is the adjustment and you can see that we're getting the ball down nicely on the fairway and now it's time to focus on the second shot which is going to be a very good chance. The thorn uh, to play with here and the reason I want to play with a thorn is that I do want to use the thorns backspin. I do want to aim on the fringe and have the ball guideline to the hole or fairway or green or fringe. Uh, and uh, have the ball guideline to the hole. The reason I don't want to bounce on the fairway before uh, the fringe and the green is due to the fact that that will cause uh, glitches and inconsistencies in the way you are approaching the pin. Adjustment uh, is going to be made. I pull over the bullseye to be as consistent as possible. We play minus 10% elevation and then it's obviously true distance as normal. Perfect ball, bounces nicely on uh, the green and it rolls beautifully right at pin for an eagle here on hole number one. Hole and number two. This is a fun hole in my opinion, especially in tailwinds. And we're going to talk about what we can do in the stronger tailwinds. But here when playing with in the playthrough, we're playing free to play balls. Therefore, we are settling with the Titan. So I'm using all the left spin that I can, which is two bars. And I'm also using two bars of top spin. Max plus 10. And once we have done that, we shall push up to a max. Using half a ball of curl to get it with a little bit, little bit of overpower. It's approximately two rings of overpower being used here. The goal is not to get as far uh, up into uh, up on the fairway. We actually want to position ourselves uh, in a way that we can play with the sniper. This, as uh, playing with a long iron, is very much dependent on a good ball guideline. And sure, we could play with the Grizzly, but the Grizzly doesn't really have that much power, which means that we're going to aim very far back most of the time. So in this situation, I would like to play with the Sniper over the Goliath. And sure, those of you play with uh, with B-52 level 7 might, uh, might could rethink what I just said, as the B-52 does have the same power as the Goliath. Add backspin ball guideline, approximately two green squares short of hole in tailwind, ball guideline to the hole in crosswind, and in headwind two green squares through the hole just to compensate for the, uh, for the extended and the compressed ball guidelines that come in tailwind and in headwind. 20% elevation is going to be all from minimum to medium to maximum distance depending on how far you are uh, you're getting your drive. And here we can see hitting a perfect ball and it bounces on the fairway. When the camera turns around like this, I think we're gonna drop it, get in, but no, the game is giving us a little 360, which is, uh, which is not fun, 
but it happens uh, from time to time. Uh, so hole number two is going to be a tough one to get an albatross on, but there is definitely a possibility. I've always disliked having left to right wind on this one here. The reason for that is due to the fact that adjusting here would be very difficult due to the fact that we do have the trees in our way. I'm using three uh, bars of right spin and whatever backspin that makes the ball guideline go approximately two green squares through the hole. And as to not complicate with the trees, I'm going to push my rings. Medium distance plus 20 and I'm using a kingmaker. Why? The reason I want to use a kingmaker is to reduce the wind as much as possible and I want to keep it free to play obviously playing with a more wind resistant ball such as wind 4 or a wind 5 obviously will make it even easier but keeping it free to play sent to the ball with a kingmaker hit perfect and this is going to have a good chance going in the hole as I've said on this hole many times is that this rough bump is definitely the best chance for you to get a hole in one in a more consistent way but if you are not really interested in going a bit more aggressive which the rough bump is then play on the fairway on the right bounce the ball up towards the pin however though it won't be as good as the rough bump in terms of getting the hole in one but it will always result into a safe birdie So for hole number four, it's very similar to hole number one in the way of that we do need to get ourselves an eagle or we will most likely struggle having a top spot in the tournament. Obviously, a birdie is uh, going to happen no matter what way you're playing here because it's a short par four and with a good chance. Six, a top spin and as much side spin to the right possible. Ball guideline to go just right of the left side rough. Adjustment is max plus five and you can see here in the end that I'm pushing up um, Approximately one ring just to gain those extra couple of yards because We do want this ball to trickle down the fairway and avoid the rough Inside wall a right curl and you can see the ball bounces on the fairway and it rolls down and sure a great left would most likely be in the rough but that's the risk that's a risk we're gonna have to take because if you do roll into the rough, uh, you will still be able to reach from there. But having not to roll into the rough, you will position yourself for a short turn towards the pin. And in this scenario, we do more or less having a straight uh, tailwind. And I would say that even if you adjust the wrong amount here, this is still going to be a good chance due to the wind being in your favor. Sure, you need to be more spot on when it comes to a straight crosswind. But in this instance, ball guideline just short of hole, no elevation, and you play true club distance. So if you are around medium distance, you play medium distance. If you are by the medium distance or minimum distance club, then you play minimum distance number. That sounds easy, but it actually is that e easy, especially on a shot like this. Perfect ball, and it's going to bounce on uh, the fairway before the green, and it rolls right a pin for a beautiful eagle on hole number four. For hole bump number five, I will give you two options. One with a very aggressive rough bump and one where we're actually going to play with the Guardian. I would prefer the rough bump over the Guardian due to it being a little bit uh, a little bit better chance of dropping a hole in one. However, though, the sniper here is uh, with the rough bump a little bit more aggressive. As you can see, there is not really much room for error. Minimum distance plus 10%. We have the ball guideline to go plenty through the hole due to the fact that we are having a slight headwind if you're having a tailwind on this one here let the ball guideline go to the hole because with tailwind the ball will have a longer push or like a longer ball guideline due to it to the extended ball guideline so you need to really think about that playing with a kingmaker to reduce the wind as much as possible bouncing into the rough and it rolls lovely into the hole for an hole in one however though not however 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 always that word what I'm looking for here, or the point that I'm trying to make here, is that this hole offers different ways of playing. There is a, a super safe way to play with a Guardian on green, which will offer an hole-in-one. But there is also this, hole, this way here with a very aggressive rough bump, which will be very rewarding if done correctly. 
So for option number two, play with the Guardian. And here we do want to play with a wind somewhere between six and a half and eight miles per hour. You see me using all its backspin, a little bit of a right spin, aiming for the second bounce uh, to be somewhat very close to the center of the dark green square row. The idea here is to get the ball at the top of the green, fall down towards the, pin, towards the pin by using the slope together with the backspin. Medium distance with a 15% over adjustment, and then we're going to take our shot and hopefully we're gonna hit, perfect. This is uh, definitely a very safe way of locking in the birdie, but also offers, as already explained, a chance for an hole in one. Perfect ball is on its way and it's bouncing on the green. You can see it gets up the green and then falls down. It looks like it's gonna top, but due to the slope, it gets all the roll back to get an hole in one here with option number two with a guardian. Hole number six is probably gonna be the most boring hole that we do have off the Greenberg slopes. The reason for that is that even if we do have a tailwind, it's gonna be very difficult to get ourselves to a spot where the Albatross is going to be a decent chance. So here, play with a power three ball minimum. Either the Titan or the Kingmaker as I'm playing here on the screen, those of you having the possibility to play with a power four or a power five ball could simplify this uh, drive much more by then reducing the overpower. Because with a power three ball in head, we're gonna have to play with around three to four bars of, uh, not bars, but three to four rings of um, overpower. Maximum distance plus 10 is the adjustment and the goal is to get the ball down here on the fairway. You rather want to be more on the right side than on the left side of this fairway because the fairway from the right side is, is, is having a slope that slopes right to left. So it's a little bit better to be on that side because that will be less riskier of rolling into the rough. Because if rolling into the rough, you're gonna have a very difficult time to get to the green in two. Now, second shot, you can see that we're having the Cataclysm here, and here the side spin of the Kingmaker is definitely a valuable stat, but it's not gonna be the end of the world if you don't have it, because you still have the curl on your club. But here is the goal to judge the speed correct. Now we're not going for pin at all, so we do have if we do so we do have a lot of room there on the green. So we do want to get the ball to roll on the fairway down towards the green and end up to be a simple pot. If you do use too much curl, you will put the bunkers in play and that's just totally unnecessary to do so. So this is a perfect way of executing this safe shot down towards the green to lock in the eagle. Because hole number six, once again, won't really be an albatross attempt if we are not having tailwind off T. All right, uh, hole and number seven. This is, in my opinion, going to be the best chance for uh, an hole in one in a more consistent way, because this is a nice little double bounce over here towards the pin. Uh, start before spin, ball guideline to the hole, and you will then adapt spins based on the wind angle. I'm using a little bit of click of top spin, no side spin. Adjustment is gonna be medium distance plus 15. And I'm only using a navigator here for the reason of otherwise I will go in between clubs. So having to start back here and you do have chain when you need to play with a power one ball at uh, maximum. Otherwise you will go in between clubs and that obviously will complicate things. And that's why the navigator is good, especially uh, from second T, because it allows us to be in the wind range of not going in between clubs. Bounce on the fairway, over to the next one, over to the green, and it rolls lovely right at the hole for a beautiful hole in one here on hole and number seven. On hole on number eight, I will show you two uh, ways of playing this hole. One, when there is a tailwind, then uh, the more tailwind we have, the better it's going to be. So the stronger tailwind we have is maybe the more correct wording in English, then the better it's going to be. The goal here is to have the ball to bounce on the fairway above the rough and the sand. That's why I'm stretching out as I'm doing, and then into the rough to roll out. 
I think that is a better way of having a controlled drive like that instead of having the goal of getting the ball down towards the green. Because we do have the bunkers on the left side, we do have the bunkers and the rough on the right side. So adjustment max plus 20 and the extra mile in the info box is there to display that here we're using the driver that gives us the most top spin and power possible. And as uh, playing them with Apocalypse gives me the six bars of top spin and also the the power together gives me a nice little bounce on the fairway into the rough to roll out. And now we're going to have a wedge towards the pin. Here, this one is going to be a tricky wedge. I judge this one, if being in range to be EB School plus a 30, based on been playing this hole a lot on Tour 13 from 30, to be able to play that wedge. Even though it's massively downhill, that has seemed to be working as the correct number. But now being out of range, it's obviously going to be a little bit more difficult. So from this range here, being outside, I would probably play around 50% elevation, max club numbers, maybe even 60% as we are so far uh, off um, when it comes to that. So it obviously getting the ball down to where we are now, is going to give us an embringer towards the pin, but it's not going to be an easy one to consistently drop. You need to be very accurate with your adjustment, your pull angle and everything like that. Otherwise you will see yourself miss. But the embringer is a beautiful club as it's a very accurate one. And if even if we are a little bit off, we could see ourselves ending up with an eagle. So this is the more aggressive way of attacking hole number eight. Let's take a look at the more conservative way of playing hole number eight. So for the more conservative option here on hole number eight, now we're going to try to get the ball to be a, a little bit down the left, but trying to be as centered as possible on the fairway. So instead of trying to pushing as far down possible, we're going to try to do a very controlled drive, not risking any rough or sand. Now playing an NMT with the rock is a perfect way of doing this, especially when we are having a crosswind or a tailwind, headwind, Nah, I'm not really sure that the NMT would be the best way there as it would be uh, getting yourself up into a situation where it would be requiring uh, overpower. A little bit lucky there after, after over adjusting my drive a bit, but the true elevation is 20% and judge the club distance number accurately. So if, uh, if you're in max and you play max here, we would be better off playing mid numbers from the NMT position. Now, second shot, we're going to play with our sniper. Sure, there is a Goliath rough bump here for those that do want to take that uh, little higher risk. But I would not really play that rough bump if I'm having a win coming left to right. Because it would be uh, needed then to bounce uh, too close to the edge of the fairway, um, in my opinion. So, therefore, we do have the sniper ball guideline short of pin when we do have a little tailwind to make sure we not go too far. Um, and then it's 20% elevation, true club distance number, and this is going to be somewhere between minimum and medium distance of our club. Those of you that do want to push the drive a little bit harder, even though we're playing it conservative, can push the drive uh, more up to the left. That will open up to be a long iron towards the pin instead, which uh, obviously will be a little bit easier to control as uh, having a shorter range of club, then it's going to be easy to control the outcome uh, if you're doing a better adjustment. So we're getting it to drop at least for an eagle, which is when we do have uh, um, a playing a conservative way, then the eagle will be more rare than it would be if we're playing it aggressive. Hole in number nine, and here I wanted to display a shot in headwind. You may be wondering why. It's because headwind is going to be the toughest way of playing this hole. And here we're going to have to use a power fireball, especially if we do have lower level clubs. Because we do want to get down on the left hand side, because that's the only way for us to get a chance for the albatross. So I'm adjusting max plus 10, and going max over power, and the driver choice should be to choose the driver that gives you the most power and top spin together. Because in headwind, you can use as much top spin possible and still go max overpower, and you will still be safe. Because the goal is to get past the trees on the right hand side, to have the trees not being in uh, in play when you're going to attack the pin here now. Now, luckily, we do have wind coming left to right here. 
and uh, then the side's been won here is not the end of the world but it would obviously be better to have more than one backspin here sorry one, more than one right spin to put ourselves away a little bit more from the rough line 10 percent elevation two club distance numbers so i'm playing this one max plus 10. this is going to however be a very tough par 5 to drop and I would say an alternative way of playing would be to go for the rough bump that is just above the bunker, which is a small strip of rough. I know that, but it's definitely going to be a way of attacking the pin a little bit better than having to play here on the side. Unfortunately, a great left there, and even if we would be having the speed enough, we would probably miss left-hand side. A perfect would have been pretty darn close. So I'm suggesting a Berserker Ball in the info box there just to give ourselves the two bars of right spin i'm using the grid iron ball here on that account because i actually don't have any certs uh, when i was playing uh, playing that uh, video so in the end hold them a nine in headwind are difficult in tailwind we play the same way crosswind we play the same way but then the drive is going to be easier and then the attack towards the pin is going to be a bit easier too Thank you so much everybody for watching this playthrough for Pro and Expert Division with Various Wind here for the Shredder Slopes tournament in Golf Clash the game. Make sure to get the ultimate tournament guides for Pro or Expert or Master or bundle it together. You can also get some exclusive tour text guides as well for Tour 7 up to Tour 13. The link is directly in the description down below and you want to go to Patreon. Thank you so much everybody for watching and good luck in your Golf Clash game.